What up? Welcome back to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add five more figures to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now today it will be the Batman Family 5-pack. Now this was an Amazon exclusive. And the thing about this one is, if you already had all of these figures, this wasn't really a must-have pack. But if you didn't have that many of them, it was a pretty cool deal. But also, if you're sick and demented, like D Hunter and I am, then you know you had to pick it up. God, now it actually does come with a couple of extra little things that you could only get in this five pack. And plus each character did come in a different paint scheme or have little details that were different. So all in all, really happy to get into this one. I actually wanted to open it because I do have some plans for customs and stuff like that with the figures and the accessories in this pack. Now they do look like a unit in the packaging, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. But first, they do come each with a black DC Multiverse stand. Now these come standard from McFarland. They're not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. Now I'll try to break down each one with the card and their accessories, and we'll take a closer look at each. First up, we have Batgirl. On the front, you do have some source material from the three jokers looks pretty nice and on the back you do have some information now that is another thing is that each one of these figures came with an alternate card that is different from the original release so if you're into cards that's another benefit of picking up this pack now actually she does come with some accessories she comes with a batarang now this one is just plain black when her original release actually came with a oh, like yellow painted version. But it's a pretty cool design and now that it is black you can pretty much add it to any Bat Family member. So that's pretty cool. She also comes with this kind of grapnel launcher that a lot of uh, Bat figures have come with but always appreciate another accessory. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at her. Now she does come in a different paint scheme than the original release. Has blue on the outside of her cowl. And you could just tell the difference in this plastic and the makeup of it is completely different than the original release. Now I'll go ahead and bring out the original release so you could compare the two because there's not really much of a difference except for the paint scheme and this one seems to be like a thinner plastic than the original release, but it has like a little bit of translucency. Now, I don't know if they went for that because it's a more gold figure. But all in all, pretty happy to have an alternate costume version of Batgirl. Now, of course, she does come with the side eye, which I actually enjoy. You could put her like looking at you at an angle. It's kind of like come hither pose, which is pretty nice and all in all like I say pretty simple repaint oh uh, glad to have her another difference is this one's hair is a little bit more darker and brown while the original release was kind of lighter with more of a reddish tone now another thing is I'm pretty partial to the original back row that was released by McFarlane which is more like a different take kind of a John S. Murphy kind of design of her, but that's a really cute Batgirl figure. I love the ears that punch through her hair. Uh, just love that figure, even though people have moved on and gone on to this more classic Batgirl, but pretty cool. Not much planned for her, except to get her up there on the shelf, but that's no biggie. She will look cool up there on the shelf. So Now the next figure is Dick Grayson. Nightwing. Now this one's kind of uh, polarizing <laughs> because of the head sculpt. Now here is the card art. This is some 
really nice card art. The only thing is that the figure does not match this card art. On the back, you do have some information. It says new 52, but I'm not sure about that. But like I said, I love the card art on the front. That's a classic Nightwing there. I kind of wish they would have just went with this, uh, like made the hair a little bit more like flowing in the in the air, but kept that same head sculpt. But they did change it up, which is always interesting. And and of course, Nightwing does come with his a Screamer sticks, which he usually comes. These are the same that I've come before. I think they're just a little bit more flat, you know, plastic that they molded it in, so it doesn't have any shine to it. And they are a little bit, they feel kind of uh, stiffer than the original ones, but that's all in all, that's pretty cool. So this figure is exactly the same as the original Nightwing release from McFarlane. They just did change the head sculpt to this like shorter hair and like a little bit more scowling of an expression on the face. Uh, I kind of thought what I wanted to do with this one before I opened the pack, but all in all, now that I've looked at him, that I really like the like kind of baby blue tone that they did on the on the accent of the costume. I just it just started liking it a little bit more. Now that I see how the domino mask paint matches that color, it kind of like brings it in a little bit more. And I think that the final nail in the coffin to, <laughs> that I thought that I decided to actually display this guy just the way he came is that the way they painted in the, the knuckle dusters on his gloves, it just like brings it all in for this figure. And I'm really uh, happy with it. I thought I wouldn't be, but I actually am. The alternate head expression actually gives you, you know, some alternate options for Nightwing. And the short hair is a departure from what we usually get. Now you can put them up to the old school Nightwing, which I actually do enjoy. But you can see the difference of the hair sculpt and also actually the face sculpt. But like I said, I'm kind of happy because it's a, you know, different take on Nightwing. So he'll actually look pretty awesome up there on the shelf. So I'm actually really happy about this one. Same thing, happy to display him up on the McFarland shelf. Now up next we have my favorite little jerk, Damian Wayne as Robin. You do have some alternate artwork there on the front. And on the back, of course, some more information. Pretty sweet. Added to the collection. Now let's now Damian Wayne also comes with some accessories, which are going to be the same kind of like throwing shuriken or like glaives, if you know what that is. Uh, pretty cool. They, these are the original ones he came with, but these seem to be a higher, shinier silver than the original ones. So always cool to add these to the armory. And of course he comes with his Deathstroke sword, which I'm not really sure why he comes with again. For me, traditionally, he has more like of a katana blade. So I may end up giving him a different blade and just, you know, add this one to my collection of swords, but really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. Now there is one big glaring difference and that is the head sculpt, but also the costume is painted in a different yellow accent, which is more of a gold accent. Kind of digging it. Pretty cool to get that different gold accent. Kind of adds a little bit of regalness to him. And if you take a look at him next to the original release, that one was more like of a smirking, cartoonish face. Uh, I do like that one, though. I gave him a cool blade for his weapon. But this one has more of a, another, you know, scowling, grimacing, <laughs> angry Damian Wayne. Uh, one thing they did do on, on these figures is they added a lot of... Uh, I guess they wanted to add blue wash, but it seems more like a gray and it's kind of freaking me out the way <laughs> the way it makes, makes the figures look. So I may end up just completely repainting the hair on this. Um, do a little bit of flat black, add some gloss for highlights, and then maybe a little bit of blue. But as it is, the hair is a little bit off-putting. I'm not sure why they went with so much 
highlights even it would have been cool if they just like lightly you know put it into the hair but it's basically the complete head of hair so no biggie i'll go ahead and repaint it just to have a little bit of fun for some repainting but that's another cool figure to add to the display now we're going to take a look at the one i've actually been most anticipating which is jason todd the red hood on the front you do have a cool image of a cracked helmeted red hood this comes from the three jokers storyline and on the back you do have some information pretty cool that they gave us this image because one of the accessories is a cracked version of the red hood helmet now the only thing i do not like about this is the color of red that they used because it's not really metallic if you take a look at the three jokers actual standard release and put them next to each other there's just no comparison that one has a cool like metallic kind of candy apple red color to it while this one is more of just like a kind of satin red but more like a almost a pastel light red so i'm not sure if i can repaint this but i might look into it and then i'll show it when i do a video about all of my red hood figures and customs but pretty cool they added that because that gives me some ideas for some custom work and then uh, <laughs> of course another crowbar now the interesting thing about this one is the color it's more like a almost gray light you know dull steel kind of color where all the other ones were different <laughs> versions we had a silver one we had a a black one and uh they just really at least when they give us a new crowbar they do jazz it up a bit with a little bit of different colors I actually enjoy this it's going to be cool to have in my box of accessories but let's go ahead and take a look at jason todd now this is awesome because i actually wanted an unmasked jason todd now i do have plans for this it is the original just same release of the red hood just with a different head now there are some differences like his his hood is actually really dark red uh, the body armor part the top torso is a little bit seems like a little bit more glossy than the original release he does have the same red accents on his boots and of course no guns but of course that could be fixed because i do have a custom unmasked jason todd now the thing about this is i thought about this long and hard and it was that i kind of wanted to use this head on the original red hood release the one that actually came with weapons but since farland actually did do an unmasked of that head and i actually sculpted it out and put a domino mask on that one i'm just going to keep that one like that and and i actually like that one that's one of my favorite customs but when you look at the custom work that i did on the three jokers red hood i actually added some holsters and some smaller guns because in the three jokers he actually has like some black Kind of like 45s the hands were like really small on the three jokers release so that the guns would fit in i picked some smaller guns and of course added a lot of detail paint to the costume but in the end the thing i never liked about that custom was that i actually used the mattel unmasked jason todd head on there and uh in all honesty it was like really small <laughs> i just kind of like looked past that and yeah it's pretty small compared to the McFarlane figures so this is kind of a godsend because I will be putting this head actually on the custom red hood that I made with the weapon so now he'll actually have guns that he could use and the head matches really well with that body and this head will actually take that custom to a whole new level now the same thing they added kind of a lot of gray tone to the hair so I might redo the hair all over again but of course he does have his cool metallic red hood helmet to hold on to so that's going to be an awesome figure to have on the shelf and i do actually have 
something planned for this body because now this body will have no head but that's not a big deal because what i'll be doing is actually adding this damaged helmet onto this body uh, probably just displaying with a crowbar but like i said i am going to be looking at painting this more of a metallic red and then that paint will make this one look really awesome up on the display shelf so have some plans like i said i'm looking forward to working on making a cool jason todd red hood figure so pretty cool accessories that they gave us and I'm happy to add this one to the collection and then finally we do have Batman on the front. It's kind of interesting because it's hard to tell the color of this Batman costume. It looks kind of dark blue, but at the same time it looks kind of black. But the gold, like high yellow tone is there on the emblem and the belt. On the back you do have some information. Of course this is supposed to be also from the Three Joker storyline. And he does come with an accessory. Now this is again another grappling gun, but this one has like a hook, kind of a grappling hook on the tip of it, but we've received this one actually before. In fact, I have actually made one of these that takes away the, the cable part and you can actually remove the hook from it. So just another one to add to the collection, no big deal. But let's take a look at the Batman a little closer. I do like the blue on here. You can tell it's like a different plastic that they used. It's pretty different from the original Three Jokers release. It just feels different in your hand. I mean, it might be just in my mind, but like when you touch the boots, it doesn't have really a leathery feel like the Three Jokers one did. This one feels like pretty stiff, like hard plastic. But I guess what it's really about is the blue color scheme for the alternate costume now for some reason when i look at this the gray from the top and moving down to the boots it just looks kind of weird like <laughs> for some reason now i can actually see where people say how the trunks actually break up that just gray color now actually recently i painted the my original three jokers figure the trunks black and it actually does do a good job of like breaking up that contrast you know where it gives it a split in the middle so what i did here on the interwebs was that this guy's trunks were actually blue underneath but you have to remove the paint now i went back and forth about actually doing that for this review but in the end it got the better of me and yes what i did was i actually removed heated this up and removed the belt so what I got left was just the actual gray trunks. And then I used some paint remover and it actually completely took off all of the gray paint. Now I didn't work so hard on the inside, like the, the part that holds that undercarriage for the thighs, but I did do the outside and it actually has become <laughs> like one of my favorite figures now. Now just that the way that the blue trunks break up the color scheme it just does something for this figure. Now, I am kind of sad because, of course, this is not going to be how it is in the original released version. But just to have something more appealing to the eye and, you know, to show you guys that it can be done. Underneath that gray paint, it is blue trunks if you want to go ahead and do that. I actually enjoy this and it's going to look cool up there on the shelf. So, not too sad about that. I am very happy that I was able to finally crack this pack open, get all these figures out, and I'm going to start working on some little bit of custom touch-ups, and then, of course, those Red Hood customs that I want to work on. But you guys, keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one. Call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.